My name is Vriska. I play a lot of Siege, and when I play a lot of Siege, I play a lot of Ranked. And when I play a lot of Ranked, I notice a lot of things that people do. And I want to go over some of the most egregious things that I see almost every fucking game. Like, if I'm not playing with a full stack of five people, this is the kind of shit that I see happen every game. First thing that I notice, and I think everyone's noticed it because it happens every fucking game, AFKing. I don't know what it is, but people in ranked tend to AFK way fucking more than people in standard and quick play and everything. And I, I, I do not understand why. Like, I understand being AFK when a match gets found, because sometimes those Q times are kind of... Those Q times are kind of insane. But then there are the people who AFK, like, between rounds or the very instant they die. And that's the part I don't understand. The thing is, when you do AFK, you are 20% of the team. So anything you're responsible for during prep phase, during drones, during etc, etc, that 20% now has to go to everyone else. The rest of the team has to pick up your slack because you're away from the keyboard because you don't want to... You don't think prep phase is fun or some shit. I get it. People don't like setting up walls. People don't like droning. But that's the game. You, you bought Siege. That's what Siege is. Siege is prep phase and fun phase. If you don't want to, you know, do the hard part, then don't go into ranked where you need to do the hard part to win. On top of that, if you are AFK and you miss out on something, you miss out on prep phase, you miss out on map band, you miss out on operator band, you miss out on picking site, etc. You don't get to complain. Like, if you're AFK for the entire prep phase and then lose that round because you weren't there for prep phase, you were only there for the gun shooting bang bang parts, you don't get any right to complain. You had a chance to, you know, contribute to the team and help set up to win the round, and you decided not. That's everyone else's problem. You, you let the, the RNG pick your operator. You just stood there, and at the two-second mark for prep, you, you threw a proxy and then went for the peak. You don't get to complain. If you... If the team loses, and you were AFK during the entire prep, AFK for picking your operator, you are the weak link that is likely part of why the team lost. Like, yeah, people may not have been playing optimally to your standards, but at least they were contributing during the prep phase. They were not AFK. If you're AFK, you've lost the right to complain because you just weren't there. You don't even get the participation trophy. And speaking of not doing things and not getting participation trophies, second big thing I notice a lot of people doing, not using their cams and drones. Siege is a game that's reliant on you using cams and drones. Siege is a information game before it's an FPS. Siege is use your cams, then take the fight. It's not take the fight, get on cams later. You can suss out what a team's strategy is, where they've put resources, where they haven't put resources. You can see where they're going to hit based on where the attackers spawn. You can see what the defenders want to hold based on where the defenders are defending. Just the act of getting on cams at the very start can be life-changing for how you go about attacking or defending a map and, you know, winning the round. Even during the course of the round, having cameras or drones everywhere on the map is extremely fucking powerful if you actually use them. Like, there is a reason that there are cameras almost everywhere on the map for defenders to use, and that's because if you get on those cams, those are extremely powerful. There's a reason, as an attacker, you destroy cameras, and it's because those cameras are extremely powerful. If you put drones in power positions on the map, like if you put a drone in, like, clubhouse rafters to look at the rafters guy, that is more powerful than just trying to face check the guy because you actually have the intel that they do not. Siege is an information game. You want the information that the opponent doesn't have. This is part of why Nook, after her rework, is insanely fucking strong. Because if you can hide information from the enemy and render a cam quote-unquote useless even without destroying it that is so fucking powerful because the enemy is not getting the information an enemy that is using cams using their drones effectively is getting the information that they can leverage to actually take their duels to actually know where to shoot and know where the enemy is you can win a round off information more reliably than you can with just raw mechanical gun skill if you're not using your cams and you're not using your drones you are missing out on some massive fucking opportunities 
And I would bet money, if you're not using cams and drones, maybe you would have won some of your duels if you actually used them, instead of just trying to blindly take every duel and hope that you can skill diff the guy. Hell, there's a 90% chance that the guy that, you know, you got skill diff by probably had a cam on you. Speaking of watching cams, beautiful segue. Third thing that I see a lot of people doing in rank that they really should try to get out of. Just watching the players after they die. The thing is, I get it, right? You want to watch the living players so you can get that, that thrill of seeing someone clutch the round or some shit. A lot of games have that sort of, I'm dead, I'm out of the game mentality. Overwatch, Valorant, etc. If you're dead, you're out of the game, you can't contribute. Siege is not one of those games. You can still help the team while you are dead. You can get on the cams as a dead player, which is significantly more valuable than spectating the Valk who's just sitting on site. Having a dead player on the cameras is so much more value than the living players getting on cameras because the living player has to actually, you know, do the animation of getting on and off cams and they have to worry about getting shot while they're on cams. Dead players don't have that risk. The dead players only have the risk of my camera gets destroyed. A, a good way to think about it is think of a team in Siege as five different sets of eyes. None of them will see the same thing. None of them will ever have the same information. That's why you communicate. If you take someone off the board, theoretically, there should be four sets of eyes now. But if that fifth person that died is on cameras, you still have five sets of eyes. You want five sets of eyes getting different sources of information as much as possible. If you have one or two people watching the same person, then you only have three sets of eyes on your team instead of five. The fourth thing I see a lot of in Ranked, and God, this one is... This one's bad. This one's real bad. Operator choices and maybe maybe putting a little more thought into them. If you try to make an operator work, despite the fact that they are very clearly not working, you're going to fuck over your team. Like if you're going like one in four and you're trying to still play gunner operators, maybe, maybe it's just not your round. Maybe you shouldn't be playing the gunners. I know, you know, Doc's got a good gun. Vigil's got a good gun. But if you're not, like, performing, if you're not getting, like, three kills every round, what what value are you bringing? Situational picks are sort of the same deal. If you're bringing Warden and the enemy's not really using smokes or flashes, or you're not even trying to play around smokes and flashes, why did you bring Warden? What does he provide? What is he bringing that isn't just a nitro? When you pick an operator to bring into the round, you have to really reevaluate what you are bringing to the team. Think, really like sit down and ask yourself, I'm going to pick this operator. Why am I picking this operator? What do they bring to the table that this team needs? If your answer is they have a good gun, I'm going to get trades or get picks, or I'm going to frag out, those are not answers. Those are the worst fucking answers you could give. Theoretically, any fucking operator could get kills. Anyone. There's no difference in the killing power between, like, Doc and, like, Warden and, like, Mira. So, why are you bringing specifically that operator? Like, what utility are you bringing? You're bringing a bandit. He brings wall denial. You're bringing thermite. He brings hard breach. You're bringing ash. She can destroy things from range. You have to actually consider what your operator is bringing that nobody else can bring and figure out if it's something you actually need. If your team is lacking certain aspects, if you've got a team of like four gunners and no one can get the wall, go Kaid, go Bandit, go Tuberau, go Mute. Sometimes you just have to play what your team needs before playing what you want to play. That's just sort of the crux of Siege. That's the crux of any hero shooter, really. And when you do pick an operator, for their utility, when you've asked yourself what they bring and it's a good answer, you have to actually use what they bring. You have to use the drones. You have to use the secondary gadgets. If you die with something in your pocket, like drones or cams or even your primary gadget, that is so much fucking worse than just throwing them out to use them. Because, like, a bad drone can still get intel. A bad bulletproof cam can still see things. A bad shield can still fuck with the enemy. But if you die with them in pocket, there's no value to be had. There's nothing they can do. Like the reason that quote unquote S tier operators are quote unquote S tier is because of their utility. 
Mira is so good because of the utility she provides with her one-way mirror. She provides information. Valk is S tier because she has cameras that are really fucking hard to see. If you don't use that intel, if you don't use the gadget, etc., like, at all, Valkyrie just becomes like a, a C tier gunner. I only say C and not D because the gun's okay, but like I said before, you're not bringing an operator just because they're a gunner and you can get kills. You're bringing an operator for what they bring to the team. And if all they're bringing is get kills, which everyone can do, you picked a shit operator. And then the final thing that I see a lot of people in rank do, even in my stack I see it happen a lot, is people prioritizing kills over the game itself. There is a statistic in Siege, some people have heard of it and some people haven't, called KOST, cost, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It is an acronym that stands for Kills, Objective, Survive, Trade. KOST is effectively the metric by which players are measured as good or bad in Siege. It is not KD. It is whether you get kills, whether you plant the diffuser, whether you survive, or whether you get a trade that measures if you are good at Siege, not, not kills. There's a reason that we have a scoreboard in Siege. There's a reason things are worth points. There's a reason that planting the diffuser is worth as many points as getting a kill. Even if you break it down, if you get like three kills, cool, that's okay, your KD's, you know, all right. If you're planting the diffuser, that is more important than your KD. If you're actually establishing a presence in the match and having an impact, that is more important than just getting kills. Like, yes, having a high KD is nice, but there are games where you'll have a guy going like, 15 and 2, but his ability to, you know, protect the diffuser is dog shit. Because he doesn't know how to play the objective, he just knows how to play KD. Once you stop playing for KD and you play for KOSC, you have to actually play for the diffuser. You have to actually shift what you're playing for. If you're playing for KD, your objective is kills. That is not the objective of Siege. The objective of Siege is the diffuser. You are killing enemies so you can plant the diffuser. You are not planting the diffuser so you can kill enemies. That is not how Siege works. When you're farming your KD and trying to hunt down the enemy team, the enemy can kill you. That is a risk that you are taking. Planting the diffuser is not a risk. All you have to do is get in the room and hit the button. It is risky to get in that position, but it is less risky than taking full-on duels with people. Even when the diffuser goes down, what you'll see is a lot of people just throwing their bodies at someone to get the kill because KD number go up make dopamine happen. Just throwing bodies at the enemy is how you give the enemy an easy fucking clutch. When you have man advantage, when you have like a 4v1, a 3v1, you have an advantage. It's a man advantage. It is not a guaranteed win. And like any advantage in Siege, you can fumble that advantage and lose. You need to stop throwing your bodies to get the kill. You need to play smart. You need to play objective. You need to stop trying to take 1v1s and pad your KD and play with the team. If there's a situation where Diffuser's down and there's two of you left, don't just throw both of your bodies at the last guy. Both of you hold a door, hold crosses. The enemy is going to clutch if you give them 1v1s to take. If you force them to take only like a 2v1 or a 3v1, there is no way in fuck they're going to clutch that. You want to leverage your man advantage, not throw it away so someone's KD can go up. Even in the 2v1, if someone loses that duel and the enemy does get the kill, they still have to worry about the second guy that is right there, ready to secure the kill. And again, if you're the guy that dies in the 2v1, your KOST still goes up, that's a trade. Trying to turn the game into 1v1s is exclusively for your KD. Playing the 2v1s, the 3v1s, etc., that's for your KOST. And god, I wish Siege showed KOST more, because that, that stat is way too fucking important. And uh, yeah, that's five quick things that I notice a lot of people doing in rank that they should put a little more work into, put a little thought into. Or maybe you see other people doing it and you just want some validation, so... Here you go. You are not the only one annoyed about that dude AFKing and then blaming everyone else. Also, a massive fucking shout out to Chris, who 
you've seen a lot of his footage in this video, in the Capcan video, the Frost video. Dude's been a fucking massive help lately. These videos are a lot easier to do with his help. So go check out his channel. He does mostly montages. And uh, yeah, peace.